Greetings from California. And greetings from New York. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a great weekend. I wish I had a cowboy hat to wear, but I don't own one yet. Oh, God. See, <laughs> I knew it. I Look, knew it is a great weekend. Cowboy hats. Them, the cowboy hats are expensive. A they diesel. are. And I mean, I, I hope this heifer has stock in Stetson. <laughs> I'm ready for the rodeo whenever it happens. Well, I, I am happy for everybody. I've listened to the first half of the album and I enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. But I, um, we need to start off the episode on a serious note. Right, because you said you had something to say before we get into our topics. Yeah. So, everybody sees this, right? It's cheese claw. Cheesecloth is what you use when you're baking, when you need to strain things. It's a, it's not that common of a kitchen tool, but <clears throat> it's pretty, it's used when you're, you know, really getting into the kitchen and doing stuff. However, sometimes people don't have cheesecloth. And so they'll use things like a metal strainer, for example. This website gives you some uses of cheesecloths, storing fruitcakes, thickening yogurts, dusting baked goods, making cheese. So, you know, that's why it's called cheesecloth. However, this website also has um, some things you can use if you don't have cheesecloth. And that's where things get disturbing. I hope not too disturbing. Muslin. Muslin fabric. It's got a fine weave material. You can use that instead of cheesecloth. Medical gauze. Another great option. Very cheesecloth-like. A coffee filter. Works in a pinch. But then we get down to clean socks. And this is on recipes.net. They're suggesting a clean sock. And you know, the pink toes are looking at this and they're like, oh, I've got a sock just out of the washer. This is why we, this is what is wrong with the world. This is why you can't eat at everybody's house. Because if they needed to make something with cheesecloth, they might have just gone to the sock drawer. And if somebody wrote it, that means somebody's doing it. A clean sock in the kitchen. How clean can a sock be in the kitchen? A clean sock. And then it says it's easy to find and easy to wash. Uh-uh-uh. If you're going to wash a sock you're using for food, it needs to be difficult to wash. You better dry clean that joker. I can't. A clean sock. That's just gonna be my answer for everything now. Oh, girl, that sounds like te that sounds terrible. I try a clean sock. Well, oh, I'm so sorry your leg is broken. What about a clean sock? Well, I think this information was targeted for a specific audience, and I think I'm a part of the audience. You know, that's watching now. That's like WTF. <laughs> so you know because. I'm from New Orleans. I don't know what a cheese cloth is or what it's used for or so, you know. That, that, that was a little confused. That was some adult swim humor. I, I appreciate it, though. <laughs> Very um, first half of Beyonce's album, like, they would get it. The people would <laughs> get that part. <laughs> yeah. But yes, y'all. Oh, I would say my one takeaway from... What I heard from the Beyonce album was Beyonce saying, I can out white woman a white woman. And I loved it. I loved it. She's like, oh, you think you're the only one? Oh, honey, watch me do it pitch perfect. Watch mm -hmm. me. But yes, uh, starting with our hot topics now that we got that out the way. <laughs> Thank you for your services. <laughs> On that... Um, on that note of using socks for um, 
food preparation. <laughs> Anywho, what a way to start. Uh, so um, Cowboy Carter came out. And I was so nervous, y'all, that I was not going to like the album because country just isn't my thing. But I was listening to it, and then halfway through, I got emotional because I thought, how dare I? How dare I doubt it, the queen? How dare I doubt that she would not give us an immaculate piece of work? I really enjoyed the album. Um, I can't say right now whether it's better than Renaissance. Right now, it's not. But I enjoy it a lot. And a lot of people are saying, like, if you heard the album, it's kind of divided into two parts. The first part, definitely, like, country forward, heavy, um, what we hear on the radio for country. And then she starts blending the genres together. And then the second half of the album gets very urban. It's for the ninjas. And that was the part where, like, I got up out my seat and I was dancing around my living room for, like, the rest of the album, it was good. And I woke up tired and I don't know why I decided to like take an edible at 2 a.m. because I definitely regretted it. I made butter, speaking of edibles. You made butter? I made oh, butter. weed butter, right? Yes. Okay, like, I remember when you lived um, in Harlem, you loved to do that. Yes, yes. And it's a lot easier out here. But I also um, will be going to a farm in three weeks and making actual butter. Okay. Well, it was, um, it's one of those like uh, farm day trip things. And I had just seen mm. them make butter on Housewives of Salt Lake City. So I was like, yes. And also like farm fresh food is really good. Mm -hmm. Something about it. Something about a freshly laid egg. It just cooks better. <laughs> but uh, did you listen to the whole album? No, I listened to the first half and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I, I, this to me is what art is about. Like not doing the same thing, doing things that are unpredictable, different genres, musicality, instruments. You giving Beyonce credit. <laughs> because credit is due. I will always give credit when credit is due. If I feel like you're doing the same thing or I'm not impressed, I will say I'm not impressed. This is impressive. And I think even if you don't like country like I do, you still just appreciate like the depth she went, the musicality, the transitions. Like I just really appreciate it. It was it was good. I don't like a lot of people are saying it's better than Renaissance, and I, I just I don't feel that way yet, but I really have to sit with it. I mean, the album's only like, what, three days old? So I, I think people like it more than Renaissance because it's new. It's a palate cleanser. We When was the last time we got something where it's like, oh, we don't use these instruments? We don't, you know, like, even though Renaissance was new, it was still inspired by... Uh, a lot, a lot of music we are familiar with. This is new territory for a lot of people. Yeah, so it's um, refreshing. Some of my favorite songs, y'all, the ones who listen to the whole thing. Like I loved um, "River Dance," like "Bounce on the Shit." Damn, you didn't hear that part yet. I think it's like the Virgo's groove of the album. Um, "Tyrant," which is definitely uh, going to be played in the club. Uh, I love the Levi's Jeans song with Post Malone. Who knew that I would like Post Malone on a song? I feel like Post Malone, there's a reason that he's popular. Also, oh, yes. is he problematic? I feel, like he, I feel like he's not problematic, really. So that also, it's like, okay, you just kind of do your thing. You never, like, you just hear about him, but you never hear about him in, like, mess. Right, he's usually just like, it's usually with himself, like with the drugs and stuff like that. He, he doesn't harm anybody but himself. Yeah, and that sounds terrible. And we don't shame people for addiction. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, what else I love? I mean, Sweet Honey Bucking. I mean, that was for the gays. Mm. Like, I was just like, I could see people vogue into that. <laughs> it was really good, y'all. I enjoyed it. Um, and just, just to know there's another act coming 
Like, she's definitely retiring after all this. I want her to retire after this. She deserves it. Are you kidding? What? That she's going to retire after this album? I mean, after I mean, the three parts. I thought it was four. Three parts. It's a three-part, three-act um, album experience. Like Not Renaissance. four? Just three. Are you sure? I'm positive. Okay. <laughs> she ain't gonna retire. I don't see Beyonce retiring. Well, That's like me, retire, like me retiring? No, but I'm just saying retire in a point like we're not gonna hear from her for a while after like three albums. I feel like that's her after every, like, she'll come out with the album, then, you know, she sit down. Like, Sade. Sade will come out with the album, then she'll go sit and she make her money, sit her ass down somewhere till well, she feels ready to record again. Well, Sade don't be putting albums out like that. I would say the, a current artist that puts out albums like Sade is Adele. Like, Adele should put out her album, live her life for, like, four, four or five years and come back with another album. Yeah, I, I'll i probably always do something quarterly. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait to watch your review, or at least the first half of your review. <laughs> Let me not fall off the bed. <laughs> what are you eating today? Oh, we have a lot. <laughs> I have a spicy salmon lava roll with cream cheese that I've spread myself, and some Trader Joe's classic potato chips that are quite delicious. Okay. <laughs> and I also had a few tablespoons of my newly made butter. So you've been, like, waiting to eat while we get on air, right? <laughs> I mean, everybody's so used to it. I just saw a comment that said, I like that you smoke, drink, and eat on camera. You're just doing you. You're just being real. It's authentic. And I pride myself on my authenticity. Don't we? Don't we all? And also, what is so terrible about eating a chip? I'm not crunching into the microphone. If you were with, and I, I wanted to, I want the channel to feel like you're with me. Like we're just sitting, half, like you're eating when you watch the show, I hope. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we eat together. But uh, how many people we have in the room right right now? We have almost <laughs> four hundred people in the room. Hey, y'all! Happy Saturday. Um, we can read the comments, so you know, Ooh. feel free to comment. Keep it cute. Did <clears throat> did everybody else feel like Friday was or Thursday was Friday this week? I noticed yes. a lot of people felt like Thursday was Friday. It was so weird. But I guess a lot of people had Friday off for Good Friday. Because I forgot Easter was Sunday. I forgot too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Alex is right. I love eating and watching Pop Rose. Me too. I love him eating and he's not messy. Leave him alone, Chris. I'm just poking <laughs> no, <he's here. laughs> <laughs> um, but let's get into our next topic uh, Something that's been going on all week And it is the downfall of Diddy It started out with them raiding his house Well, houses um, along LA and uh, Miami At the same damn time uh, What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it was a long time coming for me you're on mute. I was blowing my nose. I'm sorry. Wow. The, this is bad. This, this, is, Monday. this is going to blow up hip hop. I mean, Cheeks Mill is going to be exposed. Fist Brown is going to be exposed. The, the girls have been, hmm? No, I was like, Fist Brown? Like, what does he have to Fist do with anything? He was been at Diddy's parties. Oh, I mean, a lot of celebrities have been at um, Diddy's parties. He seems like he stayed till the after hours. 
They're going to expose drug use. They're going to expose, like, they're going after this for Rico because it seems like there's some drug money involved. There's some prostitute, some trafficking. Yes. Um, and the thing is, there's nothing wrong with sex work. If these, but as long as it's willing sex work, as long as it's consenting adults, child, your pussy, your your prerogative. You better get something out of it. I ain't yeah. sitting down unless I'm getting up with some. But when you're forcing other people to be That's a part right. of this, it becomes something very different. Totally different. And especially when you work for them or they have this power over you. Because I think Diddy, he just loves power as well as being a sexual deviant. Like people focus focusing a lot on men being involved, you know, with Diddy. But I think it's just something different, you know, but... People gonna make jokes. I'm glad the Cowboy Carter was a nice end to such a horrifying week. I mean, reading those charges, it's really incredible that this has gone on for this long and everybody's kept quiet. Well, the same thing happened in like the movie industry with Harvey Weinstein. So I don't know, like, Ever since he screwed Danity Kane over, I had it out for Diddy since then. I was like, I he is coming to him one day, one day, and is finally here. Uh, someone said there's footage of Diddy chasing Chris on that giant outdoor bed. Oh, I saw that. I saw the TikTok about that. And really? also, I love TikTok now because you will get all of the news in literally two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, so this is the report. Um, Diddy's Los Angeles area home, as well as his Miami home on Star Island, were both raided by federal investigators on Monday. According to law enforcement, Diddy is being investigated by Homeland Security for blank trafficking, domestic violence, and racketeering. Whew. And I made, I think they showed his sons being handcuffed too, or yep. like his staff was outside. Like everyone's going down. And it started from um, his producer suing him. I mean, you know, it started from Cassie, but then, you know, another person came forward and really like everyone is being exposed. Lil Rod. Lil, Lil Rod, Rod exposed Cheeks Mill. You call him Cheeks Mill? Cheeks Mill. Okay. Because so he was enjoying the clapping. Speaking of being exposed, um, you know, young Miami, half of the city girls, uh, she's accused of uh, doing sex work, which she always said that in her songs anyway. So I'm not sure why anyone is surprised by this. She seemed like she was a willing participant in all of this. Yeah. Um, but she's being also being accused for being a slight a slight drug mule for Diddy, like transporting pink cocaine. Now, does anybody in the chat, I don't do drugs like that. Well, hard drugs. What is pink cocaine? Is that the uh, special case stuff? No, special, no. Ketamine is ketamine. Okay. Um, uh, I've never heard of pink cocaine. Okay, well, somebody in the chat enlighten us and we will highlight it. Ketamine is very popular with the gays out here. And also it's something that your doctor can actually prescribe you for depression. I didn't know that. Like, so a lot of the gays that do ketamine out here, they're just prescribed ketamine for depression. And in this world in 2024, I think everybody's got a little mild depression. Oh, well, apparently, thank you. Thank y'all in the chat. It is ecstasy and cocaine together. See, and, that, well, and like, you know, I'm just really, Diddy is older than me. I think about my heart, like, I thought about that. The first thing I thought of was, oh, my God, my heart rate. I well, don't even drink Red Bull like that. <laughs> oh, my God, ecstasy and cocaine? Look. Oh, God. Ever since marijuana, okay. give me my marijuana. I'll have a little wine. I'm good. I'm good. Maybe even a mushroom. Yeah, like mushroom. If it's of the earth, I'm fine with it. But 
Oh God, that's a young man's dress. Like I could see 20, 22, 25. Diddy, you in your 50s, your heart can't keep up with, with pink cocaine. Your heart can barely keep up with pussy. Moving on, I will say that I've never, I just can't do cocaine. Anything, any white substance. Like when I was young, I saw Pulp Fiction and Uma Thurman. Uh, that scene scared the hell out of me. And I, I just said I was just not interested. Like with the whole stab during the chest or whatever the, to revive her, all that, I'm just couldn't do it. And I won't. And it's fine. Whoever wants to do that, that is their business. But uh, for Young Miami, the rapper is being accused of transporting pink cocaine known by its street name, Tucci, for Diddy in an amended lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. He also alleges that Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy will work as sex workers on behalf of Diddy and receive wire transfers or cash payments from a specific person as well. I mean, I believe it. <laughs> I, it's hard not to believe, especially after the last payoff. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. And we know people were not at those parties for the ice cream social of it all. <laughs> there, there were pills and potions in the words of Nicolette Minaj. Nicolette Minaj, Nicolette, right? Nicolette. <laughs> uh, so the downfall continues, though. Uh, so Diddy, he quietly sold all his shares of Revolt TV to an anonymous buyer. So it's still Black-owned. <laughs> But it's not owned by Diddy anymore. So people that work at Revolt, I mean, I, I think y'all jobs is is safe. I <laughs> what hope to say on that. No, I said I hope. Oh. Uh, it's the owner of Essence that bought Revolt, so maybe it'll get better over there, or at least stay the same. Okay. Um, oh, someone said it's actually called Tussy. Okay, well, thank you for the, uh, the the correction. Not like Tussie deodorant. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Um, continuing, um, Diddy's alleged 25-year-old drug mule arrested on cocaine and marijuana charges at Miami Airport. He had his own personal drug mule. And it's, like, I think documented in photos, right? Yeah. And he used to play basketball for Syracuse. Little twink guy. I want him on Love and Hip Hop because you know he's got some stories. He would be great. He looks like he would be great with Mariah Lynn. I mean, there was this drug dealer um, like back in the day when like it was like girls going wild, like all the pop girls like uh, Lindsay Lohan, like Britney Spears, Paris and Nicole and all that. They, ha they all had the same drug dealer. That and sounds very California. Very California. Yes. <laughs> That's the people who really had the, all the secrets. But oh um, God, yes, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny how they will pretend to have a job. Yeah, and it just be the most normal looking person too. Really, and it's like, oh okay, yeah. And you bought this one point three million dollar house, organizing trips. Well, I guess mm -hmm. that is true. In 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 a way, you definitely organize some trips. Like a personal pharmacist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, oh, that, that's it. Someone said them drugs did Lindsay in, but have y'all seen Lindsay Lohan lately? Like, she has really been on the come up. Like, I saw that movie she had on Netflix. You definitely should review it because it is terrible. But she acts really well, and it's a fun movie. It's just terrible. But I I'm just happy to see that she's on the up and up. I mean, kids will change you. I want to know what devil she met and made a deal with to get her face back. I know she looks so good. It's like what you you know we saw you cracked out. Normally you can, especially a white woman. Once y'all tissue paper up, it's over. <laughs> oh, so then continue. Her face looked like a shit smear, and all of a sudden it's back. Well. 
Uh, moving on to uh, more of Diddy's downfall. Uh, today, someone posted, I think this is from the Daily Mail. Diddy owes nearly $100 million on his Los Angeles and Miami homes. Diddy took out eight separate mortgages to fund his three extravagant homes in L.A. and Miami. The $100 million that is owed by the rapper, producer, and entrepreneur is due to be paid within the next few years, with one payment of $29 million needing to be settled by 2029. All three of these properties were raided by the federal agents on Monday. Why do rich people take out mortgages like that? I feel I like it's a reason. I will tell you why. Mm. It's very, it's quite simple. So I have $12 million. I want a $12 million house. If I just pay for it, I don't have $12 million anymore. With that kind of money, I get a mortgage so I can take that $12 million and invest it in something else that will make me money and pay the mortgage. With I don't want $4 million just sitting in that house when that could be cash and stocks that's making me another $4 million. So yeah, you don't want that kind of money tied up. True. And someone said rich people never use their own money. Mm, ever. Ever. Let somebody else do that. <laughs> you never put your own money in your own projects ever. Uh, so let's see. I think that's all for Diddy today. I mean, I'm sure next week we might get an arrest. As well, well, as well, well, Fifty Cent kind of got caught up too. Oh well, enlighten us. So since Daphne Joy was named in this suit. 50 said he wants to go full after full custody of the child he has with her. Daphne is fighting back and saying that he, her, and assaulted her mm. during their relationship. So she's going after him for that. So now 50, you made fun of Diddy. It's now you being accused of the same shit, and I believe it. I be you are a foul being who hates women. I believe it. Look, I was rooting for the 10th bullet, but he only got nine. I'm just saying. Um, that's another person that his day is Bye. coming. His I day is coming. The 10th bullet. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, ah! I just, I don't know, like the way he's like celebrating with Diddy, I was just like, hold on, hold on, sir. Like, what about the skeletons in your closet? <laughs> Anywho. He just was so to the minute with him. Right. Um, well, yeah, I hope she has proof because or, or something like i mean believe victims i don't think she would make something up like that but i just hope she has a plausible case to make it stick to him mm. so and, go under the jail and also like i don't want a diddy documentary like funded by 50 cent you know it's just like wrong messenger wrong messenger i want it to be i want it to be um let me see. I, I want Aubrey O'Day to like head, get somebody to invest. I could I could see Aubrey O'Day because Capricorn Clark or any of those people, y'all were complicit. So I don't want to hear from you. But unfortunately, 50 has the money. Like Aubrey, clearly, she don't have the money because she's on baddies right now. I cannot believe that. I was like, girl, the check must have like really been good and it cleared. I think Zeus is paying. You know what? I think they are too. But that doesn't mean I will work for them. I don't know. It's it, it got to be a lot of zeros, y'all. If y'all see us on Zeus, that means the check was was like... It means good. we're homeowners. <laughs> and, I, not like, and not like a, a check to be on a reality show. God, no. I meant for us to actually have this show on Zeus. That means they paid us a lot. So if you see us on Zeus... That means the check cleared. They paid us off. 
That's what they paid us off. Someone said, well, if Zeus can get the moose. <laughs> For real. Um, if Zeus said 20000 an episode. I mean, if they said 10000 I mean. <laughs> Look, in this economy, I'm fine on that. I know, right? In this economy, I, I mean, look. I mean, it, we'll have to put some like boundaries in there, like you know, own our name and stuff. Make sure there's still ownership, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to get got by Zeus either. No. Uh, so speaking of getting got. Uh, Jesse Smollett, he might not get got by the court system because they agreed to hear his appeal, so he won't have to spend that year in jail. Uh, so the that is taking up time in the Supreme Court of Illinois, but still, this made it to the Supreme Court. He's not a supreme sissy. Well, the high court announced Wednesday it would hear Smollier's case, but a date for arguments has not been set. Oh, man. Look, this is just an ongoing saga. Like, he could have just spent that year in jail. Like, went to, like he should have just told the truth. Told the truth instead of just living a lie. Like, living with the lie just creates more, like, chaos for him. He should have not hired the Osandario brothers to perpetrate a fake hate crime to try to keep your dying show on the air. Hire white men. Like, why would you hire, like, two Africans to... It could have been plausible, but I'll tell you, maybe he couldn't find somebody white that, like, does he know white people? I was about to say something messy, but... Probably not. I don't know. Uh, also, he doesn't have any friends because a real friend would have said, mm -mm. Well, some of his friends are still defending him, saying, like, they believe Jesse. I'm just like, Okay, all right. You, you really can't say anything at that point. Uh, <laughs> someone said it wasn't even for a year, um, they thought it was 150 days behind bars. Mm. Uh, Bussy Smollier needs to go away, far away. He's messing with Journey's coins. I think Journey is still, like, working. She's fine. Yeah, she's in the DC universe, but, you know. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been working with, like, has she been, like, a Tyler Perry production? Of course she has. Has she? Mm-hmm. When? I forget, but she was in one. Okay, y'all. So... People in the chat, let us know, has Journey Smollier been in a Tyler Perry movie? Not to my recollection, but let me know. We will highlight it. Uh, the Marriage Counselor. She was in that? Confessions of a Marriage Counselor, Temptation, yep. Fine. 2013. Um, Speaking of that, just speaking of Tyler Perry, because... You remember when I told you? Do we on... have to. It's Black History Month. <laughs> Every day is Black History Month. So, yeah, I agree with you. But you know what I told you um, on Pop Rose Extra? I had to take that part out because I didn't want to, like, you know, get anybody in trouble. But I will say, a Tyler Perry movie with Megan Good, just remember that, y'all. Like, I'm scared for her career. Let's just say that. I am scared for her career. Y'all will know what I'm talking about when y'all see it. When y'all see it, that's all I can say. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, but it. we're going to be talking about it on Pop Rose, and I can't wait to talk about it. I can't either. I want to do a joint review for this movie that she's going to be in. Okay. <laughs> I'm here for it. Oh my God, it might come out in June. No, you know what? I can't say anything, but yeah, it, it's going to come out around that time. Okay. Oh no, someone said, what career, Chris? I mean, that half, I have to say, every time she gets on a show, it gets canceled. She's mm. been on more one season wonders. Mm. 
Uh, so let's get into TV news, y'all. So the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion um, debuts tomorrow. We've been seeing some clips online. Have you seen them? Yes. Robin, again, I just I just shake my head because in real life, Robin is cool people. It's just the people. Robin allows herself to be embarrassed, and it's just sad. Like. I can't help somebody who won't help themselves. And again, like you have you have Andy Cohen even shading you, shading Rob, shaving, shade, I'm sorry, shading Juan, saying, Well, I know he doesn't have you know basketball practice, so he's not here. I'm just like, oh man, I, I see why she's not coming back. I mean, she's not coming back because there's no point. She wasn't asked back. She was asked to leave. They showed her, girl, you know what they did? They turned their camera and said, there's the door. Use it. Yeah. And also we see um, Andy letting them know in the beginning that he didn't like the season in his own way. He said he called the season frustrating. <laughs> and he was attempting, like, this is going to be an attempt to get, you know, get y'all chicks to move forward. Or else, there's the door. There's the door. <laughs> so can someone freeze this, please? Can you point to the door again? <laughs> but, yeah, um, I actually can't wait to see part one of the reunion. I just want to see, like, just the dynamic now that they're actually – like acknowledging each other because at the reunion, the reunion they have to. And Giselle whining, Giselle's evil. Giselle is an M. You're evil. You're an M. Well, if you stopped going after other people's marriages, maybe people wouldn't say you're evil or an M. It's so the thing is, nobody would make fun of Giselle or Kenya for being chronically single. Nobody would make fun of them for that. We'd actually be like, girl, I know it's hard out here. and These men ain't shit. It's the fact that you make it your business to get in everybody else's relationship. You know, speaking of Kenya, that's what she used to do in her early, earlier seasons of Atlanta. Like she was like the antagonizer and she would bring up the mess to people, especially the ones that she didn't like. So I will say, like, Giselle and Kenya are parallel a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, they're unlike, part of their unlikable, unlikability, unlikableness, uh, whichever. Unlikability. Unlikability is uh, the fact that they get in other people's relationships without showing their own. Right. Like, we could deal with it when NeNe would talk about Cynthia's marriage because NeNe showed her own, her own ups and downs, her own divorce. So it was, it's one thing when it's like, it's equal footing. It's another thing when, girl, you ain't even got a man, but you stay in somebody else's business. And Giselle has no story of her own. None. You know, I really hate someone that like throws stones in glass houses. Like, really? <laughs> um, also, I'm trying to think what else they showed because they showed a lot of the first part of the reunion. Um, I love Karen saying, oh, so or when Rob tried to say, oh, so you don't know who the last person you slept with was? And Karen said, no, that would be Juan. And Juan oh. been cheating on you all marriage long. Yes. Like, Karen, like, she stays shutting down Robin. I don't know why Robin keeps trying, Karen. You're like, you well, can't. When, when Karen opened her, her mouth, Rob needs to shut all of the ups. <laughs> all of the ups. Rob needs to go around the room. Wait, hold on. She needs to do like this. Let me get some more ups. <laughs> oh, we got an up here. Oh, here's an up. Let me see. Is there an up in the plant? No, there's not an up here. Is there an up behind the mirror? Let me get another up. That's how many ups. She needs to collect ups to shut with them. 
Gotcha. <laughs> uh, thank you, Candace, for the super chat. Chris just saw your pick with the cowboy hat and guitar. Yeah, I was feeling it. You know, <laughs> I took that um, in Austin <laughs> when, um, like, I went to like a prime um, event, like Amazon Prime, and they sponsored the Country Music Awards, and they had a little photo booth where you could get the guitar and the cowboy hat. Who would have thought? You know that I could use that picture. It's on my YouTube. It's C Diggy One. Also, just speaking of my YouTube, can I get a follow? Can I just get a follow? Just yeah, y'all make sure you're following him. I know. I mean, I'm just trying to get to Alex's level. And I'm, I'm trying to get to Tasha's level. We all <laughs> chasing something. Right? Well, no, 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 because I want my lawsuit free. <laughs> yeah, like I just I have, I need a hundred more subscribers. That's all it takes. Just, just one, just hit that subscribe button on C Diggy One. But yeah, if you want to see my picture of me being a cowboy, trying to look like one, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. I am just so scared that the bugaboo look is going to come back into fashion. Look, I don't care. Neckerchief, neckerchief, tube tops. Those cheap hats, those horrible outfits her mother made. Oh, Lord. I know no. Michelle don't want it to come back because they'd always put her in the irregular. Well, I'm about to buy my cowboy boots, my cowboy hat, some chaps. <laughs> that okay, look. Look, look. Get the boots. Get the hat. Chaps. Do you know how heavy chaps are? I, I want to commit. Well, fine, fine. I'll Just get a get prop top or something. You get jeans are enough. Jeans are enough. You get yourself a nice jean and, and a good belt buckle. Get a good, but don't get the check. No, because you're gonna be you're gonna commit all right and you're gonna be miserable. <laughs> Do you know how heavy and hot chaps are? No, I've never worn chaps. I have a friend, I have a friend. Um, we went to the leather store. And oh my, no, no, it is not. It's not what you think. That crap is heavy as hell. Fine. Or it's cheap. You I'm better, if you want to get chaps, it better be vinyl. <laughs> Fine. I'll just get boots and the big ass belt buckle. Yes. Get one, get a big belt buckle. <laughs> don't forget the Stetson, Chris. Now, see, I don't even know what that is. That's the hat. Oh, see, like, <laughs> anywho, what were we talking about? Potomac. That's how less of a, a fuck I get <laughs> about Potomac. But speaking Ooh. of um, Housewives, um, New York is coming back. And they made the announcement that all six cast members are coming back. Cy is coming back. Can't wait to see how she course corrects. And the most shocking of all, Jenna Lyons is coming back. And I think... People don't really care at this time because she showed her ass by not coming to BravoCon because it looked like she just thumbed her nose at it. You know, like she was too too good for it. But it's like you're not too good for all that Bravo promotion, though, right? So I don't know. I feel some type of way about that. I'm still going to peep, you know, and watch Housewives in New York. And I'm glad they're finally filming again. It, they also need to add someone else. Oh God, Uba's full time. Uba's still full time. I oh, like right. Uba. No, I, she didn't give anything. I need uh, she, give. She started giving more at the end of the season, and she tried at the reunion. Like she was coming for everybody. Oh, all right. I I have high hopes because you know it's just she's compared to Chanel Ion, but Chanel Ion gives. Yeah, and speaking of which, that shit don't even come out till June. I still don't understand that. Well, I no, I do because they don't have anything else. <laughs> They're yeah. about, it's about to be really sparse on Oops. Bravo. Really We've dry. Got, um, Summer House is going to be carrying Sunday nights. Can I be um, honest? Like I was watching Summer House, the first part of the second episode, because they were showing a clip. I'm just wondering, like, how am I going to review this? 
<laughs> like, it just seems like, okay, they're back at the house. They're, they're in Martha's Vineyard. They go party outside. They have an outside dinner. Like, it just seems like too much of a kickback. Like, how can I review a kickback? I found a way. <laughs> the petty drama. Okay. The petty drama. So, the who's sleeping with who and who's being a good friend and not being a good friend. And now it seems like they're icing Jasmine out, which they should because she's so irritating. I mean, even her husband volunteered to take a deployment so he wouldn't have to look at her. I mean, do you like Allegedly. do you like everyone on the show? No. Oh God, no. <laughs> I wouldn't spend time with any of them. <laughs> I would run screaming from all of them. They're all awful, horrible. And really? that's they're they're all awful awful people. I hate every last one. I would not want to be in an elevator with them. If I saw them, I would cross the street. Those oh, are God. not the kind of people I involve myself with. I hang out with nice people like you. Um. I would say I would hang with them. I just feel like I would be, I would just kind of feel like the odd man out. Like, I don't know. Because I would you have be authentic. Like, I think I would be popular on that show in the confessional. Just like, oh my God, here we go again. Like, Jasmine talking about shit I don't care about. <laughs> like, oh. Preston, Preston, he's sucking all the air out of the room again. <laughs> Like, you know, in a fun way. But, I mean, shout out to Preston, too. Like, I see him all the time out. He knows a lot of my friends. Like, he's really cool in person. I wonder if he watches the show. Um, I hope he doesn't watch your review, but um, I don't know. I, I've seen well, Preston out a lot. Uh, it says roast in the title. Yeah. If you can handle it, don't click on it. Exactly. We're roasters. At, at the beginning, at the end of the day. And, and it's not like I, you know, went and found you. You put your happy ass on a reality television show where you knew this would this could be a possibility. Wait, someone said Milo and Preston are the most likable on the cast. Is Milo the dog? Yes, Milo's oh. the dog. And yeah. I love, no, Milo. I forgot, no, I fuck with Milo the long and the short way. Milo. Yes, I would hang out with Milo anytime. Mm. I'm already dog sitting this weekend. Where did they go? Oh. So someone said remove Oak Bluffs and the black population there is something. Plenty have actual homes there, but I don't know if they live there year round. It's a sparse place. Blacks come and then they go. Oh, well, it's a vacation town. That's that's how a vacation town works. Like a lot of people, you don't want to live there full time. Like you don't want to live in the Hamptons during the winter. It's awful. Um, someone on a beach in the winter. Like where do you think the snow is coming from? The ocean. Someone said, if you had to pick one to spend time with, who would you, Chris? I mean, let me let me get some crowd participation. Mm -hmm. Who on the cast do you think I want to spend time with on Martha's Vineyard? You know who it is, but oh, I'm going to oh, right. in the chat. First person. Chris, you have to get on a reality show. Look, I would love to be on a reality show. It just has to be the right reality show. Like, I want to be on TV. I have that itch. I used to not have one, but now, like, I want to be on TV in some capacity. Let's see if anyone guessed. I just, yeah. want, I just want this to be more successful. I like, I, yeah, I just, I just need the income of this to, if it could just double, I would be fine. I mean, you I, guessed it. Like, let's try, let's go on and say triple. Let's, let's, let's shoot for the moon. I would be fine. I just want to do this. I, like, I love the, I, I want to be talked about on television. I don't necessarily, I can get, I can make just as much money doing this. Just as much. Speaking of which, don't forget to join the Patreon because we're having a live waiting to exhale watch along tonight. Nice. Oh, and 
We're going to watch it and yell at the TV together. We're going to say, get your shit, get your shit, and get out. We're going to say it together. We're going to rewind that one. Oh, also reading the chat. I mean, for those of you who said, Amir, you know me. Fork of Delight was the first person to say it. But yes, Amir, for obvious reasons. I mean, we have to give Amir credit because without him, I don't think they would have got a second season. Mm. He's he, just nice to look at. Like I would just want to talk to him and just be like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> uh, I mean, look, when he was on, he liked my post. Like I, I commented on something about him, and he liked my post. I was like, oh, <laughs> but I'm scared if I watch the show, I'm probably gonna like him less. Um, you never, you'll never know till you watch. Mm. Uh, so next up, I mean, while we're still in the Bravo sphere, so SWV and Escape, you know, that little teaser they did with Mona Scott Young? Yeah. Mona Scott Young. Oh my Mona God. Mona Scott Young. The devil reincarnated. Welcome, welcome to Dot's Poetry Corner. I'm Mona Scott Young. And this is love. <laughs> Man. Is that yeah, you think she sounds like that? She's got a very raspy, interesting voice. Wait, actually, it's a little. There's a little more of a whisper too. Yeah, there's a there's a whisper. There's a whisper, but a she looks like a husky whisper to Mona Scott. You, you're getting it. I, I hear it a little bit, but I, right. I know the rasp you're talking about. Like, so Kenzie, tell me why you don't. You don't want to be around Latasha anymore. Candy, candy. Like, I can't get, I need to hear it again, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she there. steals. Where is the $30,000, Latasha? But we find I out. Access. Hold on. <laughs> we find out that uh, they're actually going on tour. They're not doing another show. But I feel like it's what? the same thing. Like, they better have cameras present. We better be doing another show. Um, I ain't going to the concert if there ain't a TV show. I might want to go to the concert because I always wanted to see SWV live. Um, they were here in New York, but they were at Coney Island, and I didn't feel like going all the way out there. It was like the amphitheater. They may as well. You you could have spent less time coming to San Francisco. But uh, they're going on tour with, uh, I believe, Maya, Total, and Seven O Two, and Seven O Two. I mean, I love me some Maya. I saw her live. Um, I love her. Maya's music, but Maya herself. Oh Lord! She, oh my God! Don't come for Maya. Know, that was no. She seems like a nice person. She was just so boring. On that uh, Lil' Kim show, I just I just want to walk up to her and be like, let me make sure you have a pulse. Because you was, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I would love to interview her and be like, now girl. Yeah. Really? Like, like I, I, need, I need you to like, let's do that tap dancing. Um, I wanted to teach me the tap dancing uh, little routine from My Love Is Like Whoa. And I want to ask her, I know you wanted to be drama free, but God, how could you be that boring? And it's well, not a diss. It's like, was it production? Like, let's figure this out. I think it was production. And I think we thought it was just going to be a little bit more interesting having Lil Kim, Maya, and Chili together. It just seemed like a fun girls trip, but we were, we were wrong. Right. And I feel like there could have just been so, like, Y'all are really creative, intelligent women. Like, there could have been so many old industry stories y'all could have told about rushing to rehearsals, writing the songs, money you made, money you didn't. There just you, you there was a wealth of story there, and it was just like just looking at her mousy ears for thirty minutes every week. I didn't I mean, get the point. I thought Chili was the most boring on the show. I forgot about her. I forgot she was on the show. That's how boring she was. I was honestly, you know who was the star? Um, that designer sissy. 
the gay one, Lil' Kim's friend, Mark Jacobs' husband. It's not ringing a bell. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> the show Sorry. really is that much of a blur. Sorry it's been for that. 55 system. minutes already? It has. How? I, look, we still going though. Like, I just wanted to finish up and say X, SWV and Escape getting together. I wonder just how much that took, or was it just easier because um, Latasha was the problem? Because she was. I called her the problem on my reviews. Was it Brad Goreski? I don't think it was Brad Goreski. No, it wasn't Brad Goreski. No. He was, um, he was, he was uh, like, he wasn't, I don't think he was white. Or I think like he was like Mexican and white or something. He was like Latino. Yeah. I can't but remember. I feel like he was the most interesting. And um, oh, and the guy that was running the boat too was interesting. Yes. Yes. I, I remember that part. It wasn't a good show. Oh, that was bad. And it's like you have a boat, you're mm -hmm. in the islands, and still you can't make nothing pop. Uh, That's production's so fault. Because I'm sorry, Lil' Kim could just sit and talk. She's giving good interview, so she can be interesting. Mm -hmm. Maya uh, doesn't give the best interview. She can come off unrelatable well i just feel like she just she just chill in real life like i haven't her... seen an interview of her coming across as chill i've only seen her come across as prim and pageantry like pageant answers and stuff like that yes and it's like, girl, I, I actually tuned in because I'd like to get to know you. But hey, if you want to play that game, go ahead. Um, thank you, Self Made, for the super chat. With Beyonce's album, do you see a cowboy version of the House of Darion or Ivy Park coming back fashion wise? I don't. I don't. I do. Because people won't let bad fashion die. And if there's one thing Beyonce is synonymous with, and if there's one thing the House of Darion is synonymous with, it's bad fashion. I just Beyonce has been cramming failed clothing down lines down our throats ever since she's come out. From the crap that her mother would send her on stage wearing to that crap that she tried to sell at Kmart to the crap that Adidas was finally able to unload after five years of disappointing sales because no one wants to walk around in a parachute. So I believe that this will be another desperate cash grab from her fashion line. And I believe the clothes are going to be even uglier. Those sirens you heard is the police about to pick you up. I already called them. <laughs> I'll be a political prisoner for this. Anywho, um, someone said, I wouldn't be surprised if she came out with a partnership with Levi's Jeans because that song is super cute. I agree. I love that Levi's song. <laughs> Leave Levi's alone. It's too late. Uh, also was too late is um, for Portia and Simon. Uh, so this is our, our last big topic and look, her and Simon are, have just been going at it the whole week. He has now sent a cease and desist to True Entertainment, the production company behind Bravo, Bravo's, um, Atlanta Housewives for them to stop filming at his house. I mean, this. This is delight. I don't think he knew how good this is for Portia's plot line, but oh my god, Portia getting put out yet again. And he said, and take your cameras with you. Portia, well, you can't win when it comes to a man. So I don't know why you pick at Kenya so much because you want to talk about, oh, she'll never know a marriage. You'll never know a successful marriage. <laughs> I mean, it's because she was an opportunist trying to get with the scammer. Like, and 
like she married him in like what less than a year like and, they were, and divorced in less than two it's crazy i mean we all saw it coming i just didn't think it would have been that fast and now he like i think he changed the locks yep at the house just I like cordell i want her to have learned her lesson but of course she probably has her own house i think she still has her own house yeah, she moved her mama in that one. Yeah, she learned her lesson. She um, still has her, but did she? Because once again, an unattractive person has put you out of your own marital home. I at least get with somebody attractive. Get with a man that looks like he's worth this. You've been flying around in a private jet rental for the past not even two years, and the money didn't already run out and they're already running his ass out of the country on a rail. Out of the whole country. You, you can't want... even leave Fulton County and go over to Cobb or to Calb. You got to take your ass, not out the state, out the country. That's a new level of put out. And that love ain't ocean strong because you said, <clears throat> I'm sorry, ain't no richer for poor in them vows. Why you said that her... At least she should be with somebody that's worth this. Like, you know, in look in the looks department. You want her to be Robin? What? You want her to be Robin? Because it looks like Robin will go through anything for one. And I'm like, well, at least one is fine. That and that better be some of the best dicking on the face of the earth. He better have that leg up. Well, um, in the report, <laughs> the, le the legal letter obtained by page six states that Gorbadia is the sole owner of his Georgia house and as such does not consent to the release, disclosure, or publication of any photograph of the property, nor does he consent to the taping, filming, or recording of the property, including any aspects of any activity in or about the property. Wait a minute, he's the sole owner. So Portia, you got married and moved into a house and your name wasn't on the deed, you ain't learned shit. How you gonna marry me in front of God, but you can't sign nothing in front of Bank of America? Uh, and then he wants to file a restraining order against her. Did you hear about that? Yes. <laughs> like, let me see. He says he accused the, the housewives Atlanta Star of showing up at their marital home with gun-toting security guards. Yep. And that's because, I guess that was the night she found out the locks were changed while he was in Dubai with his new main squeeze. Also, who are these women getting with him? Like, girl, you know, the tea has been spilled. But I guess they figure, well, I'd rather be on a rental private jet than spirit. There's, I mean, there's hussies in the wings waiting, waiting. Or, you know, but, as. But why would you, but why would you hussy with him when he <laughs> has no money? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know at all. I was about to say, you know, as Beyonce said that, I mean, there's a lot of Jolene's out there. What's she getting? What are you I, I don't know. Him except the risk of a federal charge <laughs> and deportate? Mm. Uh, oh, another super chat. Thank you, Kathy Joe. Were Diddy's twins stashed in the underwater tunnels found it under his mansion? I have no idea. And then they're going to say the twins are supporting him. They're kids that don't know no better. Right. That's their dad. They don't probably know any better. Like, I don't think it's fair to ask people's children, do you support them? That's like, let, that's their kid. The parent did something. You have an issue with the parent. Leave them alone. Hmm. Um, and last one, Portia. She's filing court papers that accuse Simon of hosting women in their fractured home and claims she recently learned 
he had a questionable immigration status. She didn't know this, but married him. A questionable immigration status in the U.S. because of an alleged criminal history. So you ain't see green card or passport to first. You just saw that the plane was gassed up and thought, hey, well, what the hell? You was already making good money. You could have taken, you could have had your own rent a jet hmm. without having to hump on something that ugly. My God, the oil from his pores touched your pussy and you ain't got shit to show. I don't know how we're gonna. Um, I hope this is monetized. Is the is the button on? Yes. Okay. We'll we'll see if this is still monetized. No. After. Uh, how many we have in the room now? We have eight hundred and fifty of you in the room right now. Oh, thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. I really appreciate it. And shout out to all the hair salons and nail salons and places of business that air us. We really appreciate it. And hit that like button. Uh, so that's enough on Portia and Simon, or else my fucks for it, at least. <laughs> um, our last story is Dollar Tree plans to increase max prices in store to $7 after seeing increase in higher income shoppers. I mean, can we really call it a dollar store? I mean, well, Dollar Tree, anything, if they just keep raising the prices? Yeah, just call it cheap shit. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, have call, I remember, what did they used to have? One, three, five stores. Where, you know, some stuff's a that. dollar, some stuff's three, one, five, seven. One, three, five, seven. Two, eighty nine. Just, just, yeah, it's like, or, you know, many dollars treat. It would just annoy me, though. Like, back in the, like, even maybe, like, 10 years ago, where 99 cent store, I expect everything in that motherfucker to be 99 cents. And not a penny more. <laughs> not a penny more. 99 cents, Ninja. Oh. But, yeah, they, they said the price cap was $5, but now it, it increased oh. to 7 Stevente said, just do like five and below. Exactly. Se call it seven and below, seven and under. Oh, we'll get you out of here for 2203. How about that? Dollar Tree executives said on the call that the demographics of their customers trended towards higher income brackets. The fastest growing demographic is north of 125K a year in income. I. I guess. I mean, this is an inf like we're in a really bad economy right now and everything is going up. Everything is going up but, but wages. So I don't know what they're looking at. Yeah, I'm like, that just means that the power of the dollar has diminished where, yes, they're technically making more, but the money is doing less, which is why they ask is that Dollar Tree trying to make that dollar stretch. Exactly. Dummy. What the fuck is wrong with you people? You've gotten degrees in business and I'm understanding that and you're not? That's not a good thing. Well. What would make people with more money come to the Dollar Tree? Inflation, you idiot. The dollar doesn't matter anymore. You can't get anything for a dollar anymore. That's why they take and they broke asses there. Ah. Nobody wants to go to Dollar Tree. Can you imagine Alex just yelling at a bunch of executives <laughs> this information? Oh. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll go to these stores with my five finger, my five finger discount. <laughs> uh, I found cheaper stuff at Timu. I've never shopped at Timu. Um, it's an app. Or one of those online places. Also, Dollar General merged with Dollar Tree. Did they? Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Get the dollar out of my face. I actually have not been to like a Family Dollar or a Dollar Tree in so long. I went to those 99 cent stores that was in Harlem. You know, like those mm -hmm. stores. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
And you know what you would get from that store is like just like a bunch of knickknacks, like stuff for the kitchen. I'll get me like you know maybe some pots and pans, yep. sponges, pots and pans, a cheap colander, um, bath mats, pans, you know, batteries, mm -hmm. like extension cords. Yep. Random, like the things that you would go to Target, but you ain't going all the way to Target to get. Right. They have, well, here, here you get a lot of stuff at a hardware store. Hmm. Interesting. But um, I went to Target yesterday because I had to get a crock pot. I went to Target this morning because that's where I buy my tissue paper. Because <laughs> it's, it's cheap. Like, I'm not paying $7 for four rolls. I'm sorry, I'm not. I go to, tra I get mine at Trader Joe's. I get mine from Trader Joe's too when I can when I'm in the Trader Joe's area. <laughs> I oh I have a Trader Joe's clothes. There's just you know y'all there's just some things that you won't pay a certain amount of money for. Like I'm not paying five dollars for toothpaste. I'm not. Like I I've always paid ex exorbitant amounts of money for toothpaste, but I always liked Rembrandt. Interesting. Okay. But I smoke, so <laughs> I need it. Like, even with, like, clothing, like, I will not spend over $100 for jeans. I'm just not. <laughs> what happened? We ain't even going, like, we, we know I spend money on clothes. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, yeah. But anywho, y'all, those are our hot topics. We just shooting the shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Saturday afternoon. I'm chilling all day. So um, what you have coming up uh, before we leave? Oh, that's right. We have the uh, Waiting to Exhale Watch Along on Patreon tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And I guess, um, and I'll be putting out my butter recipe on uh, on Patreon as well, in case you want to know how to do it yourself. Okay, and I'm doing my uh, track by track Cowboy Carter review on my Patreon, and then tomorrow y'all see me on Maddie Ranch channel for the panel to you know do Drag Race reviews, and you know they miss you, Alex. They ask you, they ask about you all the time. I'm free. I'll pop over. Well, you know, there's a level of violence that you bring. And no, if the fans can't handle the truth, if the seam is weak, if the lipstick is whack, we're going to talk about it. Okay. And the truth is, half these girls need to be grateful to hot glue or otherwise they'd still be working their shift at Foot Locker and Waffle House. Well, okay. Uh, so do you have your see your soon... See you sooner then? Yes. Uh, you're going to have to go first then. Okay. All righty. Well, this is our show, and we'll see you sooner than Beyonce sees the CMA. <laughs> Mine was Cowboy Carter related, too. Mine was like, and it's no shade. It's just I'll see you sooner than Beyonce wins album of the year. Well, and everyone is saying this is album of the year, so it could be. Maybe. We, we, we'll see. All righty. Well, it's been a fantastic...